Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to From the Perch. Today's topic is going to be unenvironmental. Now, first of all, I want to, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, as a Christian, we have a responsibility. We have a directive uh, to develop the, world, the Earth's resources. We also have a, an incredible responsibility to take care of our properties, our things, our, our, our place. Um, all of us know that you don't just let a house just do what it wants to do. You don't stop maintaining. You don't stop taking care of things. Uh, and we also know that when a house is empty for even just a month, all of a sudden things begin to change on the inside. So uh, we, are, we are here to be caretakers of, of the land. And how do I know this? Well, Adam was given command and he was to nurture. And they were all farmers. They took care of the land. They, 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 uh, they took care of it. And so in that regards, today's, today's topic is not, I'm not going after the topic of where did acid rain go, although I wonder. Um, I remember in the 70s, and some of you that were around during the 70s will remember this picture. There was a commercial, and I used to love it. I actually did. I still, I still think about it. There was a commercial that showed this, this pristine shoreline and rivers and lakes and animals. And then suddenly you started seeing all this trash pile up. And I remember very clearly there was this Native American in what you would consider 1800s, late 1800s, Native American dress, and he was crying. And I've always thought, even to this day, it was one of the best commercials I ever saw because I remember it at 53 years old when I probably saw it when I was four or five years old. What it was saying was take care of the land, take care of the property, take care of those things. And we're not as Christians just supposed to occupy the land. We're supposed to take care of the land. I spent time, I spent eight years, two terms on a city council back in Jasonville, Indiana, as a as a as a youth pastor. And I'm born and raised in that community. And one of the things we dealt with were people whose whose properties just got run down and pe nobody cared about it, or somebody bought it and didn't. Run. And so we would send out letters about rancid trash and vermin and rodents running all over the place. And I remember there were people who did not care what their property looked like. And those that lived next to it wanted to remember, wanted to make sure their property values went up and not down because of what was going on. So we still have an incredible responsibility to take care of the earth. And I, so I want to just say, I want, I want to use a few words. We're, we're going to look at some, some things. Um, Lately in the news, we have seen some incredible things happen. I mentioned this morning that there's a lot of a lot of uh, factories that do smelting of zinc, copper, iron, uh, steel smelting, uh, aluminum. That those places are shutting down because the electric the electrical bills are getting overwhelming. Now, you start messing with steel and not doing those things, you are dealing with infrastructure, because most things that are built today require steel. And even if you go, oh, you put that stuff made out of plastic, you still have to have steel frames to mold those things and put them in. So nonetheless, we're, we're stewards. And I'm going to go through a couple of headlines, not a whole lot. But many of us in the last 30 years have realized that the green agenda, climate change, global warming, all those words have been thrown at us. I remember my kids coming home from elementary school back in Indiana and it was all this stuff about, are, are your parents concerned about global warming? Are you recycling? And almost like if you didn't recycle, you know, that there was something wrong with you. You needed mental help or something like that. Well, in the last two years, what have we seen happen with recycling? I live right next to a recycling center. I mean, I walk out my door, there's a recycling center right there. They stopped doing anything two years ago. So nonetheless, we're seeing changes. We're seeing all sorts of, of predictions and things being made. Now, we do know this. Uh, Providence, Massachusetts got a 200-year flood. Georgia had a 200-year flood. Mississippi had a 200-year flood. Eastern Kentucky had a 200-year flood. We also had tornadoes on top of that. We've seen incredible things happen in just the last year and a half, two years here. But you know what? Some of the predictions of the inconvenient truth or inconvenient truth, the movie and the book put out by Al Gore several years ago, and I'm going to talk about some of those things in a minute. But we are still stewards. Now, we're not going to deny, we're not going to deny the word. We're not going to deny our responsibility. But at the same time, I'm not going to give in to all the hype and the chaos and the craziness out there. And some churches are, get, are really, really, really getting into that. Uh, I'm not going to deal, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to uh, do some of the things that they're telling us we have to do. And look, electrical rates are going up like crazy. 
energy rates are going up like crazy. We've all, we've also seen uh, groups that will not not ship fertilizer and things. And you may say, well, what's that got to do with this? Everything, everything, because all we're seeing are the situations that are happening around us. And as the earth does grow, we understand that the birth pangs have started. Part of that process has to do with what people are doing and what people are now demanding. Because look, uh, there's a lot of people right now that say it's the only way. Matter of fact, let me just read a, a headline from a news article that I just saw just a little bit ago today. And it's very, 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 very interesting. Uh, it says this. Network host says media needs to stop covering both sides of issues. Uh, what? Now, I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say a strong word. How stupid is that? Deeply dangerous. It, a network host says that it's deeply dangerous to cover both sides of an issue. Is that not what unbiased journalistic reporting is all about? Absolutely. But when somebody says, you know, we don't need to cover both sides, then get out of the news media. Stop calling yourself a reporter. Stop calling yourself a journalist. Because if that's not what you're going to do, you're not doing your job. And basically, basically mainstream media has not been doing their job for 25 or 30 years. But that comment to me goes along with this. As long as we have, you know, as long as there's a narrative, we push the narrative. Hey, the narrative on these things was all, it's easy, it's safe, nobody gets hurt, nobody cries, it's going to save the world. And yet now we know the truth because the narrative is breaking down. Just some of the things that we see going on when it comes to, to those issues. Natural gas prices soar across Europe. Okay, we start saying, you know, coal, coal's bad, coal-fired power plants bad, just like what happened a few, a few weeks ago in California. They said, hey, folks, electrical uh, brownouts are coming, blackouts are coming. You know, don't charge your electric car between 5 and 8 o'clock. Where do they think electricity comes from? There may be nuclear power plants around, but for the most part, it's coal-fired power plants. And so... If they're telling you, buy an electric car, buy an electric car, the price is going up, it's more than anything else, we're going to shut down gas-fired cars, and now, oh, don't plug in your electric car, because that will hurt the grid. We're not talking, we're not talking hypocritical, we're talking hypochondriacs here in that regard. So we see all the things that are happening. Metal producer warns EU leaders worsening energy crisis is an existential threat to our future. And those are some of the things that we deal with. So the reason for the topic, the, the, the name of the topic is unenvironmental. I could have called the unenvironmental truths, could have called a lot of things. But the truth is this. What did Jesus tell his followers? Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry. You know, look at the sparrows. God's watching out for the, star the sparrows. You know he's watching over you. We're going to see major increases in electrical. And I hope you're putting money back. I hope you're praying. Say, okay, God, show me what to do. I live in a pretty large home. Now, I want to say something very, very quick. The parsonage that I live in at the church is 4,200 square feet. It has no windows. It used to be a school. It used to be an antique store. It used to be a, a, uh, a women's home, a shelter for abused women. And some of you say, oh, you live in a mansion. Uh, I live in a one-story, no, no windows house that has two, two, two furnaces, two air conditioners. And, and I have done my best. My most expensive bill in that house has been $313. Because we don't just crank up the air in the, in the summer. We don't just crank up the heat in the winter. We, we try to live as comfortable as we can. Now it's just me and my wife there. And so we really try to take care of things. But I've noticed in the last several years, every month it creeps up a little bit more. Every month what we're paying for electric creeps up a little bit more. Because things are changing, things are shifting. And if you don't think, if, if you think, if you really, 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 really think that nothing's going to get worse, nothing's going to get bad, I don't know where you've been living, but you need to come out from the cave or whatever and realize that things are going to start happening. And that 10 cents a kilowatt hour is going to jump. And not just here, we're already seeing those things in Europe, Russia, all, all over the place, uh, especially in Eastern Europe right now. Germany, Western Europe, still deal with the fact that the North uh, the, the, the West line has been basically shut down from Russia in those countries. And most of it goes through Ukraine, which is why we know there's some situations there. 
Now, I also know in, in, in 2 Peter, it talks about that one day this whole world is going to burn. There's going to be a purification process. I'm kind of thankful for that uh, because I, I don't know about you. When I go outside after a real heavy rain, I like the smell. To me, it's the idea that the earth just got a bath. And sometimes, sometimes what's happening on this planet stinks to high heaven and it needs washed down. But I want you to understand something. We're to occupy until it comes. In Psalm chapter 8, starting in verse 4, and this is New American Standard, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modernize it as I read it. What is man that you do take thought of him? What is man that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of thy hands. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. That creative process that took place in what I believe to be six literal days and not millions and billions of years, six literal days, God created the earth. I believe that. I accept that. Not changing my story. But he said, you made him, that man that's lower than God, you made him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep, all oxen, the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the pass of the seas. In other words, the Bible says, the psalmist realizes that, God, you put us here to take care of this planet. You took us, you, 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 literal, you literally put us here to take care of the earth. So we have a responsibility. That's why I don't throw litter out my car when I'm driving down. It drives me nuts. I live on a, on a highway. And I can't tell you how many times a month I have to go out with a big black trash bag and pull up trash that's been thrown out by people going by. And there's a big hill, a big incline. And so... I, the dogs know what I'm doing. I leave them inside and they'll start barking and growling at me because I'm out there picking up trash that somebody threw in my yard. You know, and, and I go back and I think about that that early 70s commercial with that Native American and, and the tear going down his eyes because people don't care about it. And what you don't care, look, if you don't care about something, you're not concerned about it. And if you're not concerned about some of those things that are going on, you, you'll, you'll find out the way to that, okay? Uh, ask the people in Jackson, Mississippi, in Jackson, who, when the Army Corps of Engineers shows that everything's taken care of, if you're watching the news there. Um, I've, I've worked with water boards, board of works of safety, um, gas boards. Um, when I was on the city council, we had our own natural gas utility. I, I know how some of these things work and the regulatory commissions, how they work with you, but I'm telling you, we've still got to take care of stuff. It's about resources. It's about making, taking care. It's about, you know, I want our church to look good when people show up. I want our people, our church to look good when people just come to church. But more than that, we're going to take care of our property. It's more than just taking care of your property, though. Okay, let, let me just share some things. In the book, in, An Inconvenient Truth, there were 10 specific predictions that were made, none of which, none of which, None of which came true. And Robert, thank you for sharing that geoengineeringwatch.org. But I appreciate you sharing that because I do believe we're seeing weather manipulations on this planet like never before. Now, in an inconvenient truth, Al Gore, former vice president, who was almost president, could have been, made the statement. We would see rising sea levels. Well, that's inaccurate. It's, it's misleading. He even Now, why would you say that's going to happen, but yet you purchase a beachfront property? Those things have not happened. Those things have not, right? Sea levels have not risen uh, enough to worry us or concern us. And even if you look 100 years out, once again, go to places like geoengineeringwatch.org. Look at the science. They're always saying, what? well, this is science. This is science. Well, I don't trust some of these people's science that are out there saying all these things. He also said there'd be an increase in tornadoes. Well, guess what? Go to the Meteorological Society. Go to uh, uh, USGS. Look at some of those things. They, they also look at those things. Tornadoes have been in decline for decades. He said there will be a new ice age in Europe. Still waiting for that. Never happened. Uh, he also said the polar ice, ice caps would melt by 2014. You don't even need a drum roll to put that in and say, hey, look, never happened. New ice age in Europe. Never happened. It never happened. And he said the South Sahara would dry up. Hadn't happened yet. He said massive flooding in China and India. And although there's been some flooding, not on the level that they said was going to happen. We've seen more flooding in the last six months, eight months than we've seen in quite a while. And, and just like Miss Nancy has said, where's the hurricanes? Because they also said that we would see uh, the Katrina. Was, he said this, Katrina will be a foreshadow of the future. In the past 10 years, we've not had one F3 hurricane. And 
we've got one out there now. I think it's named Earl or something. It starts with an E. It's one of the lowest production of hurricane seasons we've ever had in recorded history, at least the last 10 years. He said there would be melting Arctic. Once again, the polar ice caps did not melt. Matter of fact, 2015, we had the largest refreezing of the Arctic in several decades. In other words, it was all hype. It was all shadows and mirrors. It was all smoke and mirrors. The other thing, and this got all this got all of the all of the children in America angry and upset and mad. Probably got Greta going, you know. There will be a polar bear extinction. That's what it says in the book. I've got the book. I own a copy of the book. I've highlighted the book. There's more yellow on the pages than there are actual text. Polar bears are increasing. Ask National Geographic. Ask, ask those people in, in the zoology world that knows what's going on. There was also talk, as Nancy just said, about the, the coral reef. The coral reef has become massive. It, 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 it's growing like crazy. That's another prediction that was in there. Coral reef will be gone off the, of the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. This will happen. That will happen. The sky's fallen. Take a little better, better height. Folks, it was all hype. It was all smoke and mirrors. And I'll tell you what I really think. Most of the globalist agenda is about taxing you, getting every single dime, taking every stitch that's in your wallet and taking it for their own. It said temperatures will increase due to CO2. There's been no significant rise in global temperatures over more than six months for over 18 years. In other words, all the things that that book said is going to happen, and look, there was, an, there was the rewards for that book and red carpet events for that book, and yet you ever ask yourself, how does our former vice president get around? Wonder what his electric bill is for a what? How, how much gas? How much? How much carbon of a carbon footprint does he have when he's flying around the world? As are most of these guys going, you know, people in the Sierra Club and those kind of groups. Um, he said Katrina would be a foreshadow of the future. In other words, the 10 main things he said in that book that were going to happen never happened. They were predictions. And now we know they were false claims. He also said the earth would be in truly planetary emergency within a decade unless drastic things happened. The only reason we're in a drastic emergency is because our government leaders are not taking care of their citizens and their people. And, and those those things seem kind of crazy. And 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 look, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure our yard is mowed here at the church and our property looks decent. I'm gonna make sure I try to tidy up my back porch so it looks. I don't have a garage. We have outdoor stuff, but I'm gonna tidy. I, I want I want stuff to look decent and nice. I want people to drive by our church and say, "Hey, those folks take pride in their in their property." That's all we're trying to do. But the global warming, the the climate, the climate. Uh, um, I'm, I'm just going to call it, there's climate terrorism happening around us. And the whole idea is to get us to just, um, just, you know, give in and surrender. And, and, and if we just turn our air conditioners down, if we turn our furnaces down, if we would just not be so worried about staying comfortable. And I wonder how comfortable the people are that are asking us to not be comfortable. So, we don't have to succumb to all the fear. You know, Genesis 8, 22, Genesis 9, 11, Jer Jeremiah 5, 22. There, there's always those people out there that are contradicting what, what God's word says, what God's, God, God's counsel says. But, folks, we still have responsibility to take care of what we're going to take care of. It's not just occupy until he comes. It is take care of things, you know, clean stuff up. Don't be throwing trash out, you know. Don't be throwing trash out of your car. Don't just let stuff sit. Once again, I was on a city council for eight years, two terms. And I know what it's like to have people come and say, city council, look, I live beside a dump. There's rats. There's dogs coming to get in the trash. And, and, and these people won't clean it up. What do we do? It's impacting our value because I know folks who try to sell their house and they're, and they're, 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 they're living beside a dump. You know what? I know people are lazy. I'm thankful that Paul said, you don't work, you don't eat. In other words, Paul said, God expects you to do something. Do something. Work. Get up. Get out there. Don't, don't be lazy. And I, I look, look, I really think that the word lazy encompasses a whole lot of things. But being lazy is still a sin. Because if being lazy keeps you from being responsible and productive, that's a sin. In all reality. So, 
we're watching things happen with the homeless population that I, that I just saw. We're seeing ha things happen with the way buildings have to be built. We're having some places say, you know, we're not going to let anybody put a natural gas line into this, into this place. And, you're, and I'm thinking, how in the world, how in the world, how in the world can we expect energy price to do anything but go up with the way the demands and those in the globe, the globe, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a phrase to say the global elitists, and they probably are, but they're just lost people who think they, they're just lost. There's a lot of lost people out there pushing these ideas, pushing these thoughts. And, and the thing is, I'm not as bothered by the fact that Al Gore's predictions came, did not come true. I think most, a lot, a lot of people already realize that, that yeah, they, uh, they're not going to happen, and they didn't. And no one's come out and said, oh, I was sorry about that. I was wrong about that. And, and it's funny how those in, in that in the governmental world never come back and say, oh, I was wrong about that. Sorry. Sorry we raised your taxes. And sorry we, you know, we did this and all that. And Terry, I agree with you. Just like, like you said, it's not just lost. They're evil. And there are some evil things that are happening. And all it does, folks, is it plays right into the hands of the Antichrist that is coming. Because I'm sure the Antichrist is going to have a whole lot of plans and a whole lot of ideas about renewable energy and, and what we should be eating. And, and look, one thing in the environmental situation going on, if, if the United Nations is doing something in Somalia, according to a report on David Hodges' Common Sense Show, and they're doing more with eating bugs and eating bugs. We got to get rid of meat. We need artificial meat. We got to get rid. We that cow cannot be out there in that field. We need to empty those fields and and stop planting this and don't use nitrogen because nitrogen is bad. I don't know where in the world these people are getting their science, but it's not from it's not from four thousand years of history. So how do we approach it? We speak the truth and we speak the truth in love. I've had all sorts of conversations in a classroom setting as a sub and a long term sub with young people who are just cannot stand the fact that I, I brought a lunch to school that I had to throw stuff away and you should bring every, everything should be, you know, why don't you, why don't you wash those Ziploc bags out? Nope, not going to do it. Well, my mom says you are, you're hurting the planet by not washing those. Zip if I'm hurting the planet by not washing the Ziploc bag out and using it twice, you know, I, I actually, I, I, I got in my car to go home from school that day from work and think I'm thinking, there are people that are washing their Ziploc bags because they're afraid if they keep using new ones and throwing old ones away. It's not like the landfills are going to catch up with the world. There's enough trash out there already. But it's those kind of things you just think, am I dealing with reality? I'm dealing with that person's reality, but I'm not going to accept that person's reality. And I'm going to continue to say, look, I'll recite, hey, when the recycling center opens back up, I'll save, I'll save a whole trash can of stuff, and I'll recycle. I will. First of all, I live right there, but it got shut down because the recycling industry became uh, part of the COVID overreach, and now we got recycling centers around the nation that just can't even get back open, or they can't, they can't get rid of the recycled goods they have. So it's, it's an interesting place to be. And I'm not just doing this to share my opinion, but I do believe that weather is being manipulated. I do believe that there are powers that be that know what they're doing. Military is probably involved in some way. There's probably black black agencies, dark agents. We have no idea that even exists that are out there. Um, I know where I live in Kentucky, at least, at least, at least. Oh, security team just let me know. Girls, Moose and Maple. Sorry about that. My security team just let me know that danger lurks outside of my door. It's probably some envi environmental protection agency person outside my outside the church saying, we need you to stop this podcast. Stop talking bad about us. I'm not going to do it. Nonetheless, here's the point. Take care of what you can, folks. Take care of what you can and do what you can. But also, don't be afraid to question well, why are we doing something to protect the planet, but it's going to cost me a whole lot more in energy cost? And look, folks, we're already hearing, we're already seeing some of the challenges that are coming. So I want to encourage you. Be pray, Ask the Lord to show you what to do. If you need to put some money back or whatever, do that because prices are going to go up. Things are going to change. Things are going to shift. All I know is this. One day in that millennial reign, that thousand-year uh, reign of Christ, we rule and reign with him. That's what the Word says. 
We're going to be greater caretakers and greater stewards of this planet. And I'm going to say one, this, this may not mean a whole lot to some people. I've got a real burden for certain places and missions. And that place I have a burden for is Eastern Europe. I spent some time there. So when I pray for missions, I pray for Poland. I pray for that part of Russia, Ukraine, um, Estonia, Latvia, uh, Moldova, um, all those areas around there. Just what basically all along the line of what used to be the, uh, the Iron Curtain. And I really believe that when we're on the other side of this, uh, the, millennial, the millennial reign of Christ, and this is just me, I can't prove this biblically, this is my thought, but that many of you have, have a certain place you pray for. I believe that God's probably going to have us in those areas ruling and reigning with him on the planet. That's just me, once again. I can't prove that biblically. That's just my opinion, and uh, I'm going to stick with it. But nonetheless, I'm going to continue to take care of my property here at the church. Um, I'm going to continue to make sure the buildings look decent and nice. I'm going to continue to, to do the, the things that we need to do to keep our property up and maintained. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say something else. And this is not really part of it. Uh, but in the last two years, since things got kind of, kind of bad, I had, I had, a, I had a person that called and said, Pastor Dana, uh, I'm at a church and we've got, a, we've got about a $150,000 mortgage. And, uh, and but we got some folks in our church that that are just convinced that Jesus is coming right back. He's coming back in the next three months. And they basically said, why don't we not pay our mortgage for this month and just use that money for missions? And I said, wow, that sounds like a crazy idea. Well, we're, we're thinking about doing it. And I said, are you crazy? Well, well, he's coming back. And I said, you know this for a fact. Well, and I said, well, where in the Bible does it say, since you folks know I'm coming back soon, don't pay your mortgage, don't pay your bills. Um, if you're going to go to work, you're not going to worry about putting gas in your car because Jesus, you know. And so, thankfully, the guy was like, eh, you're right. That's not a good idea. A lot of people, look, we do not get out of any responsibility. If Jesus comes in the next 30 seconds, in the next 30 days, or in the next 10 years, we do not get out of any moral responsibility that we have, period. And we're supposed to be the, be the example, so we pay our bills. We do our best to get things taken care of. We honor commitments. And we are stewards of this planet. And I'll reference that, that, that commercial once again. You know, that commercial probably, and, and my parents never threw trash out. My parents didn't have a trashy home. But that commercial, probably more than anything in my life, let me understand that throwing trash out of a car does cause an issue, you know. And so I still think it's one of, the, one of the greatest commercials of all time. I love that commercial. Uh, matter of fact, I Googled it just to find it on YouTube to play it a couple times before I went on here. But the tear going down the eye reminds me, folks, we're stewards. You're stewards of your home. You're stewards of your property. You're stewards of your car. You're stewards of your job. You're stewards of your marriage and your relationships and your kids and your grandkids. You are stewards of anything your hand touches. And whatever your hand finds to do, do it all to the glory of God. So we, we can't get away with just saying, oh, that environment. Look, I'm not into the extreme environmental stuff. But I want to take care of what God has given me. And I want to be an example. Because one day we're going to stand before God. He's going to say, to take care of your property. I really believe that. He's not going to say, did you go to church every time the doors were open? I think God's going to say, did you live it out every single day? Did you live it out? Did you repent when you sinned? Did you do your best to tell someone about me? Did you do your best to be an example in front of people that are watching? So when it comes to an inconvenient truth, the thing was, it was a convenient untruth. Most of those predictions never happened. Were there some things he said that would? Well, yeah. Because you're, you're grasping for straws, you know. Even the dogs get the crumbs. But in this sense, most, you know, 10 of those biggest predictions in there were just simply that predictions that have fueled, that have fueled, literally, that have fueled, that have fueled investments financially that have made some people out to be monsters because they fly in a, in a, in a plane. Um, I see chemtrails all the time, and I wonder, what are they spraying down on my head? You look at the, you, most of you probably get a water report in your community that shows uh, what, the, what the city or the county or the rural area has said is in your water. I encourage you 
to sit down and read that and look at the high levels of metals that might be involved in your water system. Our water in my, in my house is filtered and I still don't drink it. If I go somewhere, I've checked on bottled water companies and there's only a few that I'll, that I'll buy from because I want to make sure they're not just going to the tap and fill up a plastic bottle and put the cap on it. I want to know what they're putting in there. I want to know what's in it. And so even at restaurants, I've started taking my own bottled water because I'll be honest, it's not because of the dream. Um, I've had blood work that showed me there's things in my bloodstream that shouldn't be there and I know it's coming from the water. So I'm changing some of those things. may not change at all. All I know is this. I'm waiting for Jesus to come. I'm going to take care of my property. I'm going to take care of the church. I'm going to take care of things I own. I want to take care of those things in the right way. And I'm going to do my best to be an example. But I'm also going to make sure that I'm going to call into question claims that are made that are crazy. Like if you don't recycle, you're going to ruin the planet. Okay, well, when the recycling starts up, I'll do it. But until then, I can't. So, you know, there's, there's a reprieve in that. In other words, folks, here's the deal. Take care of stuff. It's a biblical principle. You are stewards. You are the captain of your own ship. And we got to be an example. So there's a whole lot of different things that are going on. A whole lot of things that are going on that you need to be checking on. So check what's going on with your water in your area. Look for any, any environmental reports that come up about, about, about things that are going on. Because uh, there was one other thing I'm going to say. When I was on the city council, I... An environment, the Indiana Department of Environmental, Ma Environmental Maintenance, IDM, came down to look at a sewage plant we had. And they were trying to figure out because our ammonia usage going out was too high. So we had to do all these different things. We had, we had the, 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 the sludge lagoon. We had the lagoon system. Now, I remember something the guy said. He said, we want you to know that there are 200 water systems and 200 communities south of I-70 in Indiana that need to be replaced. Because they're still cast iron. They're not PVC. They're not copper. They're, they're still cast iron. 200 communities have still had those type of water systems that need to be redone. And then he said, we figure for that to be done and accomplished, we, those communities together combined will have to come up with about 800. And this was like in 1998. 1998. We're talking about $900 billion, almost a trillion dollars it was going to cost for those, those, those cities those counties, those water districts to replace every single piece of pipe. And that's just in the southern half of Indiana. So I would encourage you to uh, use filters when you can. Check what's in your water. Read those reports you get. Take care of the planet, folks. But, do it, but don't, don't do it in some extremist, terrorist, terroristic way, you know. And uh, I saw where some people were were uh, putting knives in the, in the tires of cars because they were SUVs. You know, we, we've got eco-terrorists. Uh, we got people tying themselves to the tree. You'll never see me tied to a tree, okay? Just so you know. I'm not going to tie myself to a tree and demand that somebody, you know, stop flying, over the, flying above my head or airport shut down or anything else. But, boy, there's some interesting... There's some interesting people out there, folks. That's all I've got to say. And I'll just imagine some of the emails and comments I'll get after this. But hey, pray for the nation. Pray for the planet. Let's pray, okay? Lord, give us wisdom as believers today to know what to do. Uh, I'm thankful for the earth you made. God, I'm thankful that you did it in six days. And you put it together lovingly, willingly, with great wisdom. Lord, you constructed this whole thing the way it should be. And in many, many ways, we have destroyed it. We have, we have poisoned it. But God, I'm going to pray you give us wisdom how we live, how we eat, what we do. Help us to honor your creation. Because, God, that's what it all comes down to. Help us to honor your creation in any possible way that we can. And help us recognize what the extremes are to stay away from. But more than that, God, help us to honor you by honoring what you make. And that's our prayer today, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, folks, thanks for joining me today. And uh, 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 this afternoon, uh, my son-in-law and my daughter, uh, Tyler and Hannah will be coming back through there. They were in Tennessee on their honeymoon, and we're going to spend some time with them for just a little bit and before they head up north and head back to their lives. But so thankful for that time and uh, thankful for what God's doing in us, with us, and through us. So, folks, stay strong. Stay strong. All right? And don't tie yourself to a tree. Hey, God bless. Have a great day.